Salamat po at magandang hapon po sa inyo lahat and to all our members of City Council. Good afternoon. Before we listen to the first State of the City address of our Honorable Mayor Joy Belmonte, I am very proud to announce that in our first 100 days, the 21st City Council was able to deliver on our mandate to pass meaningful and substantial measures that aim to improve the lives of our constituents in Quezon City and be a benchmark of excellence in the Philippines. As of today, October 7, 2019, the 21st City Council has filed 395 measures with 152 ordinances and 243 resolutions. In our first 100 days, the Quezon City Council approved and passed 51 resolutions and 11 ordinances. Most notably, the 21st City Council has passed SP number 2863 S 2019, an ordinance operationalizing freedom of information in the Quezon City government and providing guidelines, therefore, or more commonly known as the FOI ordinance. This ordinance is especially close to my heart and to Mayor Joyce as well as this serves as the instrument of the people of Quezon City to join us in our continued fight for good governance and servant leadership. The FOI ordinance empowers the people and equips them to be more proactive and participatory in our administration. Thus, the people of Quezon City will be part of our mission and accountability and transparency and in line with the call of the national government to eliminate corruption. Mayor Joy, ito po yung dream come true natin. To the 21st City Council, we are off to a great start. May we continue to seek the guidance and the wisdom of God in our work as legislators of Quezon City. As provided in Proverbs 16, verse 3, Commit thy works unto the Lord, and thy thoughts shall be established. Through the grace of God, may we continue giving the best to our people by listening to their needs and legislating the necessary measures to address those needs. To the 21st City Council, congratulations on our first 100 days. We are indeed off to a great start, and that promises a very great term. I have always maintained that the key to a strong Quezon City is a strong family. Hashtag, strong families, strong QC. Hashtag, strong families, strong nation. For the rest of our term, we will continue to work and study measures that ensure the protection and care of families, including marriages, children, and parental rights. Likewise, we will continue to strengthen our Quezon City Anti-Drug Abuse Advisory Council dahil alam naman natin na ang malakas na pamilya ang pinakamalakas sa panlaban natin against illegal drugs. Right now, we already have 64 drug-cleared barangays. We will work hard to ensure that this, these 64 barangays will continue to be drug-clear and drug-free and for the number of the drug-cleared barangays to increase in its maximum capacity. To the Honorable Mayor Josefina Tanya G. Belmonte, I only have high praises for you. It cannot be emphasized enough that your first 100 days in your office has been full of success, hardships, and challenges with a call to clear the roads and the threat of an epidemic. Yet, you rose above it and showed extraordinary leadership with your passion to serve and your penchant for excellence. If the first 100 days is an indication of the coming years, Quezon City is surely blessed to have you as our chief executive. Congratulations po on your first 100 days, Mayor Joy. And this being said, this message goes out to all leaders of the family, leaders of the community, and public servants in the Quezon City government. Let us hold on to God and hold on to each other. 
that does not forget His promise to us. Do nothing out of selfish ambition. In humility, value others above self. Maraming salamat po. And that being said, the moment we are all waiting for, I would now like to recognize the Majority Floor Leader, Councillor Franz Pumarin. Thank you, Mr. Presiding Officer. The 21st City Council is ready to hear the State of the City address of our City Mayor, uh, Joy Belmonte Al Alimurong. Please take your seats. To our Honorable Senate President, Senator Vicente Soto III, the proud father of our Vice Mayor. <clears throat> to our first district representative, the Honorable Anthony Peter D. Crisologo. <clears throat> to our second district representative, the Honorable Precious Hippolito Castello. <clears throat> to our third district representative, the Honorable Alan Benedict S. Reyes. To our fifth district representative, the Honorable Alfred Vargas. To our sixth district representative, the Honorable Jose Christopher Belmonte. To our BH party list uh, chairperson, the Honorable uh, Congressman Bernadette Herrera D. To Ka Edwin Zabala, the representative of the Iglesia Ni Cristo. Officers of the Quezon City Police District, headed by Acting District Director, Police Colonel Ronnie Montejo. St Station commanders and members of the QCPD directorial staff. Junior, uh, Superintendent Elena Rocamora, DSC of the BJMP Female Dormitory. Officers of the Quezon City Fire District, headed by District Fire Marshal, uh, Superintendent Jaime Ramirez, and members of the QCFD. <laughs> Officers and representatives from the national government agencies, Schools Division Superintendent, District Supervisors, Education Program Supervisors, Division Coordinators, Education Consultants, Elementary and High School Principals, City Councilors, Spouses, Families, and Guests, the Vice Mayor's Family, most especially her, his beloved wife, Joy, my family, uh, represented by my father, um, former Mayor Sunny Belmonte, <clears throat> former government officials, Quezon City Civil Society representatives, Quezon City Association of Filipino-Chinese Businessmen, headed by its president, Mr. Joseph Lim Bonghong, and its mem members. <clears throat> Citizens of Quezon City, of course, my favorite vice mayor, Gian Soto. <clears throat> our majority floor leader, Franz Pumarin. Our minority floor leader, Eric Medina. City councilors. Barangay officials, department heads led by City Administrator Michael Alimurung, and Secretary to the Mayor R.J. Belmonte, government employees, partners, friends in media, honored guests, isang magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat. Sana nakapag-CR kayo. Bago po tayo nagsimula, medyo may kahabaan po ang aking ulat sa araw po na ito. It has been 100 days since we started working together. 100 days since we embraced the challenge of bringing change to the largest and most populous city in the nation's capital. 100 days since we took up the responsibility of being vanguards for progress. Change makers undaunted by the many issues and concerns that preoccupy the almost 3 million people who call Quezon City home. Sino ba naman ang makakapagsabi 
na habang binabalangkas natin ang ating mga matatayog na mga pangarap para sa ating lungsod, na tayo ay hahamunin din ng mga pagsubok na di natin inaasahan. Ngunit kinaya at napagtagumpayan natin ang lahat ng ito ng dahil sa ating pagbabayanihan. President Manuel Luis Quezon, to whom our city owes its name, once said, I want our people to be like a Molave tree, strong and resilient, standing on the hillsides, unafraid of the rising tide, lightning and the storm, confident of its strength. If there is anything the past hundred days have taught us, it is that there is nothing we cannot overcome if we are strong, steadfast, and resolute as a people. It would be those qualities that would allow us to address the challenges we faced during the first 100 days of my term. These include the national government's directive to clear obstructions in our roads, the hazards posed by African swine fever, the need to improve social services provisions, the demands of maintaining peace and order, the necessity of improving our frontline services to make it easier to do business in our city, and the moral imperative to take steps to institutionalize good governance reforms, improve infrastructure, and make our city more livable. Those 100 days began with a presidential directive to restore order in our streets and sidewalks by strictly enforcing long ignored laws that would have or that have been violated for so long that the abnormal had come to be accepted as normal. Anim na pong araw lamang ang ibinigay sa atin upang makamtan ang layuning ito. 60 days were given to all cities in Metro Manila, regardless of size. The same ultimatum applied to cities ranging from 5.95 square kilometers to 166.20 square kilometers in size. Ngunit nang dahil sa ating determinasyon at pagkakaisang, ang akalang imposible ay naging posible. We not only passed this test, we did so with a very respectable rating, which at the moment I am not at the liberty to disclose from the DILG. It's close to 89 and close to 91. Kahit mga barangay hall, daycare centers, kapilya at police station ay hindi nakaligtas sa ating layunin na malinis ang ating mga lansangan at bangketa. What started as Executive Order Number 13 or the creation of Task Force for 60 Days spearheaded by the Traffic and Transport Management Task Force and the Public Order and Safety Offices later evolved into QC Bayanihan sa Lansangan and came to include the MDAD, Task Force Disciplina, virtually all the departments of our city, and most notably, every single one of our city's 142 barangays. Bagamat, Nakatoon lamang ang direktiba ng ating Pangulo sa mga pangunahing mga kalansangan katulad ng National Primary and Secondary Roads at Mabuhay Lanes, we went above and beyond what was expected and required of us. Nagdagdag pa tayo ng dalawampu hanggang tatlumpu na alternatibo mga ruta na maaaring daanan ng mga sasakyan at makatulong sa pagbawas ng buhol-buhol na trapiko sa ating lungsod. These roads that are unique only to our city have been aptly named as QC, Bayanihan sa Lansangan Road Networks. In all our efforts and in every interview I give, I always stress two things the need to sustain our gains, and the importance of caring for the displaced. Yes, our city needs to have a firm hand, but that hand must be guided by a sincere desire to care for the least, the lost, and the last. 
To sustain our clearing operations, we will be fully implementing the provisions of our traffic management code and our tricycle management code with the use of clamping devices and no contact apprehension mechanisms. We will also partner with towing services and deploy additional traffic enforcers with ticketing powers to our various barangays as well as deputized trained barangay personnel to do the same. Tuloy-tuloy pa rin tayong nakikipag-usap sa mga may-ari ng mga bakanting lote para magamit ang mga ito ng ating mga apektadong TODA, UV at Jeepney o kaya ay upang makipag-partner sa pagpapatayo ng mga multi-level parking spaces. Nakikipag-ugnayan din tayo sa mga commercial establishments na payagan nilang magamit ang mga nababakanting parking slots nila sa off-peak hours ng mga motoristang walang mga garahe. Upang tulungan ang ating mga displaced vendors, hinikayat natin ang ilan na pumasok na sa mga pampublikong palengke. Binigyan naman natin ang iba ng alter alternatibong vending sites kung saan ay hindi sila magiging sagabal sa mga pedestrians. One of our proud accomplishments was to register all our vendors profile them, and give them official IDs. The number of our registered vendors has grown from a mere 950 vendors when we took over to now 3,200 at present. Sa pamamagitan nito, hindi na sila muling mag mapagsasamantalahan at pagkakakitaan ng mga sindikato o protektor at magiging legal na silang mga maninda sa mga government-identified vending sites. Malinaw po ang mensahe natin para sa ating mga small businesses sa Quezon City. Kung gusto ninyo na magnegosyo sa ating syudad, tutulungan namin kayo. Huwag lang kayong umasa sa mga masasamang elemento na kayo lamang ay pinagkakaperahan. As Christmas approaches, we are also going to establish night markets called Sari Saring QC in the parking lots of several partner malls like Virtis North in which our micro-entrepreneurs, including our displaced vendors, can sell their products. In keeping with our goals, we have asked our city architect, Lucille Chua, to redesign our city-owned markets to include adequate parking spaces and terminals for public transportation. The days of Task Force 60 Days may be coming to a close, but its mission remains. This is why we are now launching Task Force Forever. to continue the mandate of freeing up our roads and sidewalks to eventually include even those that are city-owned and barangay-owned and in the long term, establish more walkable spaces for our people. Please allow me to acknowledge Task Force 60 Days, led by Attorney Ariel Inton, General Elmo San Diego, Congressman Ranulfo Ludovica, Colonel Procopio Lipana, and Assistant City Administrator Alberto Kimpo. Please, Task for 60 Days, rise and be acknowledged. Kasama na yung mga iba pang makasama natin sa mga ahensya ng Pamalang Lungsod, Quezon. I'd like to thank Councillor Ramon Medalla, Committee Chair of Transportation, for sponsoring the ordinance creating the Department of Traffic and Transport Management. According to a Rappler survey, Traffic is considered the primary concern of the general public. And now more than ever, this department will be crucial. I now also appeal to the members of the City Council to pass more measures in support of our traffic and transport management initiatives. Among them are a comprehensive parking ordinance, an ordinance prohibiting vulcanizing shops, taliers, and similar establishments along major thoroughfares, an ordinance regulating motorcycle taxis, an ordinance strictly prohibiting terminals along priority roads, among others, marami pang iba, ibibigay ko na lang ang listahan kay Vice Mayor Soto. 
Alinsunod sa Build, Build, Build program ng ating Pangulo, sabay-sabay nang isa sa katuparan ang infrastructure projects ng ating national government tulad ng subway, segment 8.2, Skyway 3, at ang LRT 1, MET 3, MRT 7 Common Station na siguradong magpapa, magpapalala sa traffic at magdudulot ng higit pa na magpagdurusa para sa ating mga mamamayan. Upang mapaghandaan ang mga ito ng mabuti, binuo natin ang Task Force Build 5 upang makipag-ugnayan sa mga developers at ahensya ng pamahalaan at makipagtulungan sa kanila na maibsan ang inaasahan nating problema na idudulot ng sabay-sabay na pagsasakatuparan ng mga proyektong ito sa ating lungsod. Ika nga, there is no gain if there is no pain and we are just about to enter the pain period of our city's development. But we will not caught, be caught uh, off guard. We are prepared. The challenge to improve traffic is not the only issue we have had to deal with in the first months of our administration. Nitong mga nakaraang na linggo, tayo po ay buong tapang na humarap sa problema ng African Swine Fever o ASF. Hindi natin inaasahan na magiging malala ito sa ating lungsod dahil tayo ay isang highly urbanized city kung saan mahigpit na ipinagbabawal ng HLURB ang mga backyard piggeries at poultry farms. Ngunit sa kabila nito, nalaman po natin na pangkabuhayan ito ng marami sa ating mga mamamayan. Mga kaibigan, Pinaninindigan ko po ang desisyon natin na harapin ang problema ng ASF consistent with the protocols of the Bureau of Animal Industry. This may not have been aligned with the national government strategy with dealing with this disease, but I stand by my decision as my priority then and now is to eliminate this disease in our city at the soonest possible time while empowering our people with the information they need to avoid further spreading the disease. With the decisive leadership of our city veterinarian, Dr. Anna Maria Cabell, please rise and be acknowledged, ma'am. You are my hero. We have to this day called 4,466 pigs from all the affected areas and started distributing 13,398,000,000 million pesos as financial assistance to our city's hog raisers. And while everybody knows we have very limited funds, I would like to thank Congressman there are Congressman Bong Suntai, who is in Russia, Congressman Kit Belmont, and of course, Congresswoman Precious Hippolito Castello for offering to help alleviate the hardships of their affected swine raisers. We have also met with the DSWD to increase assistance to affected areas. In the meantime, we will be strictly enforcing Take note, Councillor Ivy Lagman, our zoning ordinance prohibiting piggeries in our city and have given all hog raisers up to February 2020 to comply with this directive. In the meantime, we have already instructed our youngest department head, our 25-year-old uh, Ms. Mona Yap of the Small Business and Cooperatives Development and Promotions Office, please rise, to include are affected hog raisers in our new program called QCreate or the Quezon City Recovery Program for Employment Assistance, Training, and Entrepreneurship, especially designed for persons in crisis situations. Pinapasalamatan ko ang mga barangay. Kayo po, na hindi nag-atubiling mag-report na makaso ng ASF sa kanilang mga lugar. Uh, uh, punong Barangay Marlu Ulanday, Punong Barangay um, Banjo Pilar, Punong Barangay Rodel Lobok, Punong Barangay Wilikara, Punong Barangay Maniguarin, and Punong Barangay Tata uh, of Barangay Rojas. Gatlodera. 
This is the kind of action we need to help us solve this issue. Sa kabila ng mga di planado mga pangyayari sa nakaraang mga buwan, hindi natin kinalimutan ang mga pangako natin sa ating mga mamamayan. Isa na rito ang pagpapabilis ng serbisyong pampubliko. Putting people first in our agenda of governance means ensuring that their needs are met at the soonest possible time. Dahil ninais kong mapabilis ang serbisyong kinakailangan ng ating mga mamamayan, lalong-lalo na sa oras ng kagipitan, pinabilis natin ang mga proseso at todo nating binawasan ang red tape na siyang naging sagabal sa tunay na makataong paglilingkod. Katulad ng ating pinangako, matatanggap na ang tulong sa mga nasunugan sa loob lamang ng tatlo hanggang limang araw pagkatapos ng sakuna. Mula sa dating tatlo hanggang anim na buwan. In just the first two weeks of July, we have cleared all the backlog from November 2018. To date, more than 4,600 families from 44 fire incidents have received financial support amounting to around 6.5 million from the local government. Nagpapasalamat ako kina Konsihal Alan Butch Francisco at Konsihala Aurora Suntay. May dahilan ba kung bakit kayo co-authors dito? Sa isinulong na ordinansang taasan ang financial assistance sa nasunugan from 2,000 to 10,000 pesos. Na halos 20 taon, 20 taon na po na hindi nagbabago panahon pa ata ni Adelina Rodriguez 2000 na ang binibigay hanggang ngayon 2000 pa rin. Ang ating burial assistance naman ay may tataas na sa tulong ulit ni Alan Butch Francisco at Aurora Suntay ang tandem na from 10,000 pesos to a full package worth 25,000 pesos. Pero ang hinihiling ko sa inyo, sana ipagbawal na natin ang sakla kasi meron ng uh, full financial assistance package na ibinibigay. At siguradong matutuwa si Konsihal Roger Juan, matutuwa ka ha, huwag tayong mag-aaway, sapagkat ang kanyang inakdang ordinansa na nagbibigay ng death benefit assistance na 5,000 pesos sa mga kaanak ng yumaong senior citizens, ang mga backlog mula pa 2017 ay sinimula na nating ipamahagi at tatapusin natin ang distribution ng death benefit assistance na ito sa buwan ng Oktubre. Para sa iyo yan, Councilor Roger Juan. Taon na rin ang binilang sa delay ng allowances ng mga estudyante. But in coordination with Paymaya, we have also successfully arranged for the quick release of the allowances of our scholars under our Quezon City Scholarship and Youth Development Program. Hindi rin po natin pababayaan ang ating mga guro. In our recent celebration of World Teachers' Day, we were happy to have shared that we have improved the system for processing their allowances. And unlike in the past, when their allowances were delayed to the point that rallying in City Hall seemed their only recourse to be given attention, we have now already released their allowances for the first quarter. Our senior citizens also deserve a local government responsive to their needs. We have speeded up the processing of over 6,500 indigent social pension applications to receive assistance from the DSWD. We will also work out a system whereby payouts will be decentralized to their respective barangays to avoid the inconvenience on their part of having to commute and line up for hours at City Hall under the sun or under the rain. Ganon din ang ating pagbibigay halaga sa ating mga kawani. Nakipag-partner tayo sa Commission on Audit upang maging computerized ang ating Human Resources Information System na walang karampatang gastos para sa ating lungsod. This system will soon include 
standardized electronic employment documents to shorten the notorious three-month delay in their first salary to just one month. Bukod sa pagpapabilis, pwede kayong pumalakpak, makawani. <laughs> ano? <laughs> Bukod sa pagpapabilis ng mga prosesong nagpapabigat sa ating mga mamamayan, marami pa tayong isasagawang hakbang para sa kanila. Habang dinedebate pa ng Senado ang SOGI Equality Bill, huwag po kayong magalit sa aking uh, Tito Sen, tayo sa Lungsod Quezon ay magiging mas agresibo sa pagpapatupad ng ating Gender Fair Ordinance. We will focus... We will focus less on beauty contests and concentrate our efforts on advocacy and education in order to build a truly inclusive society, respectful of diversity. Hindi lang po ito usaping CR. This is an issue that is rooted in respect, compassion, and love for others. And we will treat it as such. Hindi rin linggid sa aming kaalaman ang kalagayan ng ating mga solo parents. Kaya naman kami ay bumuo ng solo parents welfare unit sa ating Social Services and Development Department o SSDD upang tulungan at matutukan ang mga hinaing ng ating mga solo, mga magigiting na solo parents. Ito ay sa tulong ni na Councilors Patrick Michael Vargas Lena Marie Huico, and Kate Abigail Coseteng. I assure you that the local government stands ready to be your new life partner in raising your children. Hinihikayat ko rin ang konseho na ipasana ang panukalang ordinansa ni konsehala Shaira Liban patungkol sa pagbubuo ng Children's Welfare Unit sa ating SSDD upang makagawa pa tayo ng mas marami at makabulang programa para sa ating mga kabataan. Currently, we have a partnership with the Jollibee Group Foundation for a feeding program in Barangay Payatas. May programa din tayo kasamang ilang mga philanthropist sa ngayon nakapag-opera na ng pitong bata na may bingot at bukol. At marami rin tayong mga programa para sa abused, neglected, and abandoned children na ating tinututukan sa pakikipagtulungan din ng iba't ibang NGO, NGOs. Kabilang na rito ang Bantay Bata 163 ng ABS-CBN Foundation Incorporated. Para sa mga ating mga persons with disabilities, hinihikayat ko ang ating konseho. At alam ko ang pinuno dito ay si Konsehalan Nikki. Uh, Crisoligo, na magpasa ng ordinansa, na magtatatag ng job desk, particular lang sa kanila, na may kaakibat na insentibo para sa mga kumpanyang makikilahok sa inclusivity program na ito. Para naman sa mahigit na 215,000 informal settler families sa ating lungsod, tayo po ay bumubuo Bumubuo na ng bagong shelter plan batay sa ating housing code na isinulong nung nakaraang konseho ni Konsehala Maria Victoria Copilar. Alinsunod sa ating pangako na in-city relocation, pinondahan na natin ang pagbili ng malawakang lupa kung saan itatayo natin ang ating kauna-unahang township initiative which will be more adept to changing times and land values. Modeled after Singapore, we will be building mid to high rise structures with various payment scheme options in order to broaden access to a wider range of beneficiaries. The township will include support structures such as a police station, a super health center, learning institutions, open spaces, sports facilities, and a commercial area. The model is tried and tested and is ideal for uplifting the lives of our ISFs towards a more sustainable and inclusive community. We are also restructuring our housing, community, development, and resettlement department in order to be more sensitive and responsive to the needs of our ISFs and to, and to prepare for our flagship initiative. 
Recently, we have also awarded land titles to more than 429 beneficiaries under our direct sale program and community mortgage program. Marami sa kanila ang mga tumanda na kahihintay sa titulo ng kanilang mga bahay. Kaya naman atin po itong ginawan ng agarang aksyon. Marami pa ang ating ipapamigay ng mga titulo sa mga susunod na linggo at buwan. Sa tulong ng sanggunian, magsimula na tayo bumili ng mga lupain na kasalukuyang kinatitirikan ng mga ISF. Ang isang property sa Payatas at Tofemi property sa Bagong Silangan para sa higit 4,000 na pamilang magiging beneficiaryo. Okay po ba yun, Councilor Copilar? Aside from housing, education is also a top priority of our administration. Isa sa pinakauna nating naging hakbang ay ang pagbuo ng Education Affairs Office na pinangungunahan ni dating konsihala Alison Medalya upang maplano ng mabuti ang mga programa nating pang-edukasyon, makipag-coordinate sa Division of City Schools patungkol sa mga pangangailangan ng ating mga guro at mag-aaral at siguraduhin mataas ang kalidad ng ating bagong Quezon City University. We are We are also set to build the 53 classroom uh, integrated high school in Barangay Bagbag. Ang kauna-unahong walong palapag na public school sa ating lungsod. Thank you, Councillors Ramon Vincent Medalla and Irene Belmonte for authoring this ordinance. Magkaka-elevator pa ang paaralan na ito. Sempre naman ang hirap kaya umakyat ng walong palapag, di ba? Pero pwedeng pampapayat 'yan. On top of this, we will also be building the Bagong Silangan High School next year. Katulad ng ating pinangako, tinatag na rin natin ang unang TESDA Assessment Center sa Barangay Matandang Balara para bigyan ng higit na kahandaan ang ating mga senior high school tech work graduates sa pa pasukang trabaho o itatayong negosyo. Another test the assessment center will soon be operational at our Skills and Livelihood Training Foundation in Barangay Kamuning. Healthcare is also at the forefront of our agenda of governance. And two of the often heard complaints during our campaign was the shortage of doctors and the lack of medicines. Thus, dito pumalak pa kayo. We, hindi, hindi pa. we have increased the budget for medicines from 550,000 in 2019 to 2 billion in 2020. We pray that the city council majority supports this increase when they review our proposed health budget. We will also be adding more health professionals as I promised sa nalalapit or nalalapit na personnel selection board palakpakay dita magbubukas tayo ng tatlumput dalawang permanente imposisyon para sa mga doktor. Sa tulong ng pribadong sektor, nasimulan na rin natin ang libreng medical, dental, at uh, eye check-up sa ating mga public school students. Ito ay regalo ko kay Ma'am Bayubay para magkaroon tayo ng baseline data para malaman ang health um, situation ng ating mga kabataan. At sa wakas, may sasakatuparan na ang ordinansang nagmamandato ng libreng maintenance medicines at pneumococcal vaccines para sa ating mga senior citizens. To ensure that there will be no wastage or leakage in the procurement of medicines, we will be applying a system developed by Makati Mayor Abby Binay with approval of COA Chief Rex Kieta. We in Quezon City welcome the best practices of other LGUs in order to improve our own systems of service delivery. And I would like to seek 
uh, the support of our doctors. I know that you were in the beginning opposed to a new system of procurement. But I am assured by Mayor Abby Binay that because of this system, she eliminated corruption in the procurement of medicines by 100%. Hindi dapat pinagkakakitaan ang buhay ng tao. I would like to seek the support. I would like to seek the support uh, of our city councilors to help me address my commitment to the UN fast track initiatives to decrease the number of persons living with HIV to zero by the year 2030. We will call this program Zero at 30. Because for everyone's information, Quezon City has the highest HIV rate in the whole Philippines with a 10%. 10% um, of all persons living with HIV are in Quezon City. And my promise to the international com community is I will work to make sure that we will have zero cases by 2030. Please help me, all of you open-minded counselors out there. Salamat kina Concejal Diorella Soto at Franz Pumaren. We will also be increasing our medical assistance. Kung dati, 3,000 pesos lamang ang natatanggap ng mga dumudulog sa atin. Ngayon, 5,000 pesos na. Bukod pa riyan, naging fully operational level 1 hospital na ang matagal na nating hinihintay na Rosario Maklang Bautista Hospital sa Barangay Batasan Hills. Congratulations, Dr. Kabotahe. We have done it. More work has to be done to address the health requirements of Quezon City residents. But progress is being made and more progress will be made. In the months to come, keeping our people safe goes hand in hand with safeguarding the health of our people. One of our goals is to provide safe and orderly communities in the city. Atin pong pinag-iigting ngayon ang mga hakbang upang maging ligtas ang lahat ng mga mamamayan. We recorded a 17% drop in index crimes according to PNP data compared to this time last year. And a big part of this accomplishment can be attributed to the tremendous support of our former mayor, Herbert Bautista, for providing assistance to the QCPD. With a new facility at the female dormitory at Camp Caningal, and I inherited, I thank Mayor Herbert Bautista for this project, but I inherited it unfinished. Um, uh, we were able to finally finish it with the help of engineer um, Gani Versosa, and now are able to bring down the congestion rate from 1,243% to 498%. At least now, they have space to exercise, beds to sleep on, and a shower in each cell. And my next project, together with our women counselors, is to build their old quarters so that they can now have a livelihood training center and classrooms in which they can finish their high school and college education. In line with our proposed no contact apprehension policy, cameras are now in place along Pete Wazon Corner 15th Avenue as proof of concept. Kaya sa mga dumadaan dito, you have been warned. Dapat misis ninyo ang kasama ninyo. Jan, bakit ka tumatawa? Verna, sorry, nandiyan yata si Verna. Once finalized, all city-owned and operated intersections will have this technology. This is to avoid corruption and lessen human friction in traffic management. Thanks to DRRMO Chief Carl Michael Marasigan, we restored the connection of over 96 CCTV cameras 
to monitor key junctions and thoroughfares in our city kasi hindi pala siya umaandar. And he has reassured us that the remaining 148 city-owned CCTV cameras that are now down will be up and running by the end of this month. Where's Mike? Promise. Where's Mike? Promise mo yan. Our business processing and licensing department, headed by Margarita Santos, has made many reforms to ensure compliance to the ease of doing business law without compromising our zoning ordinance and collections to the city or disregarding the regulatory requirements needed to avoid a repeat of the ozone and manor hotel tragedies. For example, Only 11,000 environmental clearances were issued from the six-month period of January to June 2019. But 15,000 were issued from the three-month period of July to September 2019. Last year, 30% of all business permits were not in allowable zones and did not have locational clearances. Now, we have ordered full compliance with our zoning ordinance and from 35 approved clearances a day from January to June, these have increased to 150 a day since July. <laughs> Alam kong ayaw niyong pumalakpak nandito si Mayor Herbert Bautista. <laughs> Mayor, yan lang naman ang totoo. Occupational permits can now be released as quickly as three minutes. And in keeping with our mandate of speedy services, occupational permits can be processed on-site starting January of next year for businesses with 300 employees or more. Karagdagan pa, pinasimple rin natin ang pagbabayad ng barangay clearance fees. Daliga ng mga barangay Barangay, led by Councillor Alfredo Rojas, has also agreed to standardize their fees. Very soon, this will also be included in our business one-stop shop para dito na din babayaran ang barangay clearance fees at iba pang mga requirements para sa pagtayo ng negosyo. Pero katulad ng sinabi ko, lahat yan ay babalik sa inyo ang ating pong mga barangay. We are now working with partners to automate many of our processes so that applications and payments can be done from the convenience of your homes. We are likewise working to digitize documents across various departments and make public information available online to reduce your need to come to City Hall. We are also in the process of creating many city halls in our districts to decentralize the processes of the local government. We can start by requesting our city councilors from the 5th district to rationalize the Novaliches District Center and add more plantilla positions because right now there are only eight plantilla positions in NBC. Everybody else is contractual. Sa pakikipag-ugnayan ni City Treasurer Ed Villanueva sa mga malls, magkakaroon na tayo ng mga business offices kung saan pwede nang magbayad ng buwis at iba pang transaction sa ating gobyerno. Currently, we have these offices in Robinson Small, Novaliches, Ali Mall, Cubao, and soon in Robinson Small, Magnolia, Robinson Small, Galleria, Ayala Fairview Terraces, and Fisher Mall. Umaasa tayo na by decentralizing, which is my firm belief, ay maiiwasan na ang napakahahabang mga pila dito sa City Hall para lamang sa pagbabayad ng ating mga buwis. Nagbabayad ka na nga, pinapahirapan ka pa. Ngayon, nasa mall ka na. <laughs> We are also developing new programs to improve the business climate in our city. By developing innovation hubs and other growth hubs, we hope to invite more companies and investors to Quezon City. Through our new Investment Affairs Office, headed by former Councillor Joseph Huico, a new telecoms company is scheduled to set up shop in Quezon City. 
LBS Telecoms, which specializes in telecom tower construction and back office work, will hire 800 Quezon City residents. Its clients include Globe, Smart, and Converge. This office is also in charge of forging PPPs or public-private partnerships. And we are happy to report several prospective projects in the pipeline. Congratulations, Sep Quico. Walang tulong po si Sep. Tinulungan po niya akong magsulat ng aking talumpati. Pope St. John Paul II, the second one's wrote, I put this in for you because it's religious. The earth will not continue to offer its harvest except with faithful stewardship. We cannot say we love the land and then take steps to destroy it for use by future generations. Isa sa mga prioridad ng ating administrasyon ay climate change mitigation. Sa katunayan nga, tayo ang nag-iisang lungsod sa Pilipinas na kasama sa isang pagtitipon-tipon ng mga malalaking mga siyudad si Malabuka sa Copenhagen, Denmark upang bigyan diin ang ating pagtaya sa pangangalaga ng ating kalikasan. And I would like to acknowledge and give credit to Mayor Herbert Bautista dahil sa kanya nang galing. Ang ang uh, impetus na sumale sa prestigyosong samahan na ito na kasama ang mayor ng New York, ng Berlin, ng London, ng Paris. No? So, baka sil ikaw pa nga ang hinihintay nila, hindi naman ako. <laughs> baka magulat sila. Kala nila naging LGBT ka na. <laughs> Among our plans... Include solarization of government-owned buildings, reducing our solid waste generation, supporting mass transit initiatives, enhancing wastewater management, and promoting walkability and bike-friendly initiatives. Tungo sa hakbang na ito, atin pong iimplementahin sa darating na taon ang Gora Lane Project ng ating City Parks Department headed by Ms. Nancy Esguera. Ma'am Nancy, please rise. Yeah, that's my Nancy. Project niya po ito. Gora meaning green, open, renewable, accessible lanes. This will provide safe, walkable, bikeable, and beautiful pathways in our city. We have also allocated a substantial amount to enhance the beauty and walkability of East Avenue, which tourism experts say has vast potential, it being covered by canopy of trees and natural shade. Diba, mga taga Fort District, maganda maglakad kasama ng boyfriend at asawa. Okay. Ang Quezon Memorial Circle, ang Central Park ng ating lungsod at bukod sa pagtanggal ng mga eyesores at siyangge sa ating pinakamagandang ganawin, sisimulan na natin implementahin ang Master Redevelopment Plan ng Quezon Memorial Circle upang maging isang major tourist destination. This will not only include a physical makeover, but also a complete events program for the whole family to enjoy. A farm-to-consumer weekend market is in the works, as well as weekly doses of culture and art, and soon we will be launching Pop QC. Meaning, changi siya, pero pop, meaning proudly made original products of Quezon City, Pop QC. In line with our environmental thrust, I wish to thank Councillor Dorothy Delarmente for sponsoring an ordinance prohibiting the use of single-use plastics and utensils in our city. We in City Hall should lead by example and bring our own tumblers and jugs. Nikki, itago mo yan. This is something we hope to provide to all our public school children next year along with water fountains in every school so they can just fill up their water jugs. 
I appeal to the City Council to pass an ordinance creating the Climate Change and Environmental Sustainability Department that will lay down the groundwork to ensure the attainment of our climate change and sustainable development goals. The effects of climate change are most felt in countries like ours, as the DRRMO can attest. And Mike Marasigan and I are now best friends because nagsisimula kaming makipag-usap sa isa't isa ng alas tres ng imedya araw-araw. Very romantic. And we are grateful for the continuous efforts of our engineering department headed by engineer Isagani Versosa. Please take a bow. Sagani Versosa, to arrest flooding through continuous declogging of our sewage and dredging of our waterways. Sa loob ng isang daang araw, atin pong natanggal ang mahigit 320 cubic meters ng basura at dumi sa ating mga kanal at ilog. Hindi na rin po tayo magpapagawa ng rip-rapping kasi ito lagi ay nasisira, kundi puro retaining wall na lang para todo nang mawala ang pagbaha sa ating lungsod. Mga kapitan, palakpak. May, may cue yan, palakpak. We are happy to report that since our efforts started, the reports of flooding have dramatically gone down as uh, Mike Marasigan tells me every time it rains. Kasi lagi kong tinataong, san ba bumabaha, Mike, para makapagpadala tayo ng tulong at ang lagi niyang sinasabi, wala pong baha, mayora ngayon. Kasabay ng ating pag-improve ng mga programa para sa ating kalikasan, may mas naging matalino tayo or mas naging matalino tayo sa pagtatayo ng mga infrastruktura sa ating lungsod. For our 2020 budget, we have set up an infrastructure committee to screen and evaluate all proposals. In line with this, we focused on seven priority projects. Bukod sa mga nabanggit na paaralan kanina, we are also constructing the multi-purpose hall in Barangay Santo Domingo, the Damayang Lagi Barangay Hall, and I'd like to commend uh, Punong Barangay Boytanyag because pinayagan niyang tibagin po namin ang Barangay Hall ng Barangay Damayang Lagi dahil sa ating bayanihan sa lansangan program at bilang pasasalamat, siya ang una kong papagawan ng Barangay Hall. Pangalawa ka, Kapitana Rosa Magpayo. The redevelopment of Galas Public Market, Kamuning Public Market, Frisco Public Market, and Project 4 Public Market. We will also begin the retrofitting and renovation of the Quezon City General Hospital where the new and improved dialysis center will be located and this will be dedicated to Councillor Kate Coseteng. These are but a few among other infrastructure projects kasi baka natatakot kayo hindi kasama. Kasama rin naman po yung mga iba ninyong mga requests. No, that our newly passed Freedom of Information Ordinance, kudos to you, Vice Mayor Soto, will allow you, all of you, full access to and full scrutiny so you will know exactly how we spent the budget of our city on infrastructure. Thank you, Councillors Ivy Lagman, Lena Marie Wico, Estrella Valmosina, and Restituto Malangen for finally making our good governance dream closer to reality. To aid our infrastructure program, we have created the City Real Estate Management and Control Office, thanks to Councillor Bernard Herrera. This office will solve the problem of valuing, managing, acquiring, and disposing of city government land and property. Sa tulong ng tanggapang ito, mas mapapabuti ang pangangasiwa ng iba't ibang ari-arian ng pamahalaang lungsod. At the end of the day, our ultimate goal is improved services to our people through good governance. And this begins with increased representation by the people themselves. 
masaya kong pinaparating sa inyo na magiging masigla ang pakikilahok ng civil society sa pangangasiwa ng ating pamahalaan sa mga darating na taon. From, from just over 381 accredited CSOs in 2001, when my father began his first term, is my father present? Are you listening? <laughs> Listen. <laughs> Minsan lang kita i-extra. We now have more than 1,600 civil society organizations representing many more sectors, including solo parents and LGBTQI+. Plus. Tunay na isinasakatuparan natin ang ating adhikain na kasama ang lahat sa pag-unlad. Thank you to Councillor George Banal Sr. and BCRD's Ricardo Corpus for seeing this dream of increased people participation to fruition. Improved governance is also reflected in a motivated and highly focused workforce. Our city administrator works with each department to determine their targets and key performance indicators as a means of ensuring everyone is working together in the achievement of their department's goals and ultimately that of the cities. We will practice meritocracy in the promotions process and expose our employees to capacity building programs so that they may acquire new skills and knowledge to enable them to aspire for promotion and job security. So ngayon, wala na pong palakasan dito sa ating lungsod. Mag-aral lang po kayo. Ipasa lang ninyo yung mga requirements at yung necessary exam at kahit hindi Kahit hindi kayo kilala ni Franz, hindi kayo kilala ni Eric, hindi ko kayo kilala, pwede po kayong ma-promote. Based only on your performance and your abilities. We have also formulated a new merit promotion plan to reward our most talented public servants with rapid advancement. In professionalizing our workforce, we will also be launching within the next few days our email services so, so that official communications to and from the Quezon City government will be coming from an official address, the quezoncity.gov.ph domain. Kasi nakita ko yung mga email ko galing kay atin city attorney, Nino Casimiro, ang nakasulat from daredevil.gmail.com Parang napaka-unprofessional naman pag pinapadala natin yung mensahe na sa ibang bansa. Ngayon, qc.gov.ph na. <laughs> Maglalaan rin tayo. Eto, mga kawani, happy kayo dito ha. Pumalak pa kayo. Maglalaan rin tayo ng 90 million pesos para sa mga benepisyong pangkalusugan para sa mga kawani ng lokal na pamalahalaan by providing HMO o healthcare benefits for all City Hall employees. Our public servants will now have protection in times of emergency and sickness. Today, I am happy to tell you, I will sign an ordinance granting anniversary bonus to all employees of the local government as part of the 80th Foundation Anniversary. Hindi yata kayo kasama do. And in keeping with our speedy service delivery, next week you will receive that bonus. As part of our agenda to ensure all is in order 
Executive Order Number 1 established an internal auditing system to make sure we in government comply with all laws, rules, and regulations as the embodiments of the people's trust and confidence and that we are meticulous with our work for the benefit of our city. For example, since we intensified because of this EO, we intensified our real property inventory efforts and we have registered an estimated 2,800 new real property units representing an additional 2.3 billion in assessed value and an estimated 66 million in additional annual taxation. Eh, may pera naman pala eh. Sa interes din ng maayos, mahusay, mabilis at di kalidad na serbisyo, mahalaga din na malaman namin agad-agad ang inyong mga reklamo, hinaing at suhestyon. Kaya naman, amin pong pinagtibay ang ating linya ng komunikasyon. Salamat kay Carlo Versonilla. Carlo Akaloy, take a bow. Or are you absent? <laughs> There's Kaloy. We have strengthened our 122 and 8888 emergency and public service hotlines. Globe landlines and mobile users can now access our 122 number, which in the past was only limited to smart users. Sa loob lamang ng isang daang araw, kami po ay sumagot ng mahigit 2,800 mga tawag galing sa inyo. Yung iba, prank call. Sa pagsisikap ng ating mga call center operators, marami na po tayo naligtas na buhay, natugo ng problema, naayos na serbisyo, at, at napag-alaman ng katiwalian. Pero anonymous sila, ayaw nilang sabihin. Tayo rin po ay gumawa ng bagong Quezon City Facebook page na kung saan mas mapapadali ang ating pakikipagpanayam sa mga mamamayan. At ang aking lang uh, pakiusap, sana tunay na concern ang inyong ilagay. Huwag niyo naman akong i-bash. Kung gusto niyo po akong i-bash, sa Facebook personal page ko na lang. This is our fastest and most convenient line of communication. Our official Quezon City website will soon also contain all downloadable forms. Unti-unti na po tayong nagiging tunay na smart city. Quezon City, my friends, is at a crossroads as we mark its 80th year. Sa ating celebration ng ating 80th anniversary, marami po kaming inihandang mga aktibidad at programa para sa ating celebration. Kayo pong lahat ay aking iniimbitahan na makipagsaya sa pagdiriwang ng ating anibersaryo. Minsan lang tayo maging 80 years, pero mas marami pa tayong taon na bubuuin para mas maging matibay at matagumpay ang ating lungsod. Our culminating activity will be the world's largest multi-city hackathon. Ano ba yung hackathon? This is an ideas fair, mga idea na mga um, ideas ng, uh, and a gathering of 4,000 socially conscious individuals in Smart Araneta Coliseum for 24 hours to try to solve some of our country's most pressing problems using technology. Together with our partners, the, Aya, the Araneta Group of Companies and Impact Hub, this is our city's contribution to the Guinness Book of World Records, wherein we want to gather as many smart, intelligent, and people who love their country into one, under one roof, to try to help the country. Kaya hindi lang po tayo magaling sa world record sa Zumba o kaya sa paghahalikan, matatalino din po ang mga taga Quezon City. As the needs of our residents grow, so must our capacity to respond to their concerns. This is the rationale behind our proposed budget for 2020. Hindi gaano kalaki majority floor leader. 27 billion pesos lang. 30% higher than in the past year. Okay na ba yan sa'yo? 
Okay na pwede na ba yun? Okay. This I made, I must point out, is being made possible without raising our taxes. As a bonus, we will even be providing tax incentives to all new businesses for the next two years. Our goal is to provide for your needs without burdening you with its costs. Hindi po tayo nagtaas ng buwis. Hindi po tayo nagdagdag ng pabigat sa inyong mga balikat. Napagtagumpayan po natin ito ng dahil sa pinaglalaban ko at ni Gian mula ng unang araw pa lamang namin dito bilang mga halal na opisyal, good governance o maayos, mahusay, matino at may pusong pangangasiwa. 27 billion pesos because of good governance, Vice Mayor Gian. Yes, here in Quezon City, we think with our heads, but we act with our hearts. But I will be the first to admit, however, that our city will only go as far as we take it. Quezon City will only be successful if there will be active participation from all its citizens. Kahit na sino ka pa, may boses ka sa Quezon City. Ang ating opisina ay bukas sa lahat ng mga suhestyon, reklamo at rekomendasyon. Asahan ninyo na kami ni Vice Mayor Gian Soto, mga konsehal na mga distrito at mga punong barangay at mga kagawad ay buong pusong maglilingkod sa inyong lahat. Our motto will always be kasama ka sa pag-unlad. All of you are part of our success. Tayo po ay magtulungan, hawak kamay upang matamasa ang mas maunlad na buhay. To the private sector, we encourage you to partner with us and help us to develop the city and maximize its potential. To our residents, we urge you to make your voices heard, to support the campaigns of the city government, and to be one with us as we move Quezon City forward. The times require that we be strong, steadfast, and resolute as a people. They demand that we are strong in our convictions, that we show we are steadfast in our principles, and that we remain resolute in our desire to make Quezon City not just the one, not just one of the greatest cities in the country, but one of the most developed the, in the entire world. Sa tulong nyo, At sa tulong ng Panginoong may kapal, walang imposible. Hindi lang sa lansangan yan. Moto natin yan. Walang imposible. Maraming salamat po at mabuhay tayong lahat. The presiding officer. The Honorable Councillor Franz Pomare, Majority Floor Leader is recognized. Yes, I move for an adjournment. Adjournment. Um,